What's up, Michelle here. So in this video, I talk with Torren about his, you know, inspirational story um, and how he's, you know, using his experiences, you know, to to campaign and raise awareness and also support other people. I've put the links to his podcasts and his social media in the description. Uh, we also had a discussion about the absolutely shambles of a mental health system in the UK. Um, we talked about different ways of, of coping with depression, anxiety, etc. Um, yeah, if you do like to watch motivational videos and you find them, you know, really helpful, uh, press that subscribe button. I'm nearly at a thousand now. And also, I am an author. Um, I'm almost finished a memoir about how I survived um, years of abuse in the UK mental health system. And I've put the link to that in the description below. But yeah, enjoy the discussion. And yeah, go check out Torrin. All right, it's better now. Yeah, I turned off my Wi-Fi, so at least we can do it without interruptions. Good, yeah. I just had like a frozen image, and it just says connecting. It's yeah. <laughs> not again. <laughs> so how are you? You are you okay? Are you okay this morning? Yeah, not too bad. Um, I took my medication and to be honest, I'm still waking up, but yeah, okay. I'm not too bad. Okay. Well, you know, thank you for doing this. It can't be that easy. Um, but, you know, it's very important. You know, the mental health system in this country is abysmal. And, you know, I'm just trying to raise awareness. And obviously you are as well. So, you know, do you want to yeah. Do you wanna talk about, you know, who you are and why you, you're doing what you're doing? Yeah, so my name is Tommen. Um, for the last... Trying to do math. Um, since June 2017, I have been raising awareness of my own stores on Facebook. Um, you know, just putting it out there, you know, not for anyone but for myself, sort of like um, a therapy. Mm -hmm. And I soon came to the realisation that it, it wasn't just me that was struggling, obviously, it was a whole world. Mm -hmm. and, I, all of a, and all of a sudden, I started to amass a following. And it just snowballed into that. Like, I kept, like, uploading. I set a schedule for myself, so I scheduled posts to go up, go out from, like, 6 a.m. till half 10 at night. And I've been doing that on a consistent basis to the point where my main Facebook page has just over 11,000 members on there. I then... And then... In 2019 or 2020, I then created my private group, which has almost 800 members in, where they can be themselves without worrying about you know um, abuse within the group. Um, I have had there have been two occasions in the group where I have had to remove them. Due to uh, due to reasons I won't get into, one of, one of them was domestic um, violence, so I nipped down the board. But ever since yeah. then, it, it's yeah, been okay. Yeah, that's safety reasons, though, isn't it? Yeah, I get that. Yeah, because I because I only I only give people one people one chance. Mm -hmm. If they mess up, that's it. They're out. That's the type of person I am. It may be too harsh, but at the end of the day, right, I have a responsibility. If Yeah, I mean, if it's a mental health group, you know, it needs to be pretty strict. Yeah. But really... Exactly. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and so, yeah, since, so, yeah, since June 9th, 2017, that's been what I've been doing. Um... 
on the side, I've been doing like um, courses. Like I've done courses in counselling, psychotherapy, psychology. Um, I've done courses in uh, med meditation, which I received my master in Ushiri Reiki. Wow. I've also got my teaching accreditation in that. But that's but for now, for the time being, that's mainly for me. Well, that's later on, later on down the line. I may um you know, put my work out there and mm -hmm. offer other people. But for now, I'm just focusing on me because, as I keep saying to people, draw the number one priority. Yes. Regardless of what other priorities you may have, i.e. family, you may have kids, right, which is totally understandable, and yes, okay, if you have kids, then yeah, they're obviously, they're obviously your main priority. Mm -hmm. But if you can't look after yourself and give yourself the time you need, then how are you going to look after those people? Exactly, yeah. I think it's good. I've um, done so much of this study. That's, you know, I think studying, I mean, for me as well, it's it really helped me, you know, it grounded me, you know, doing all these different courses, it really helps, definitely. Yeah, exactly. It's like, the way, the way my, the way, the words, the way, my page came about was I I have social anxiety as well as general anxiety and I was put in a situation at work where and I explained to my bosses that I were able to cope. They ignored it, they put me in a situation to where I had at this point I had my very first panic attack. It wasn't fun. Um and it got to a point where I was pissed off and I said, no, struggle back. Prior to that, I started on my Facebook page and then that just, and then that incident just pissed me off even more. And I went on, I did a live and I started ranting, you know, getting the frustration out. And ever since then, because of that experience, I've just been on this mission to spread as much awareness as I can. Because, mm -hmm. and this is the one thing that kind of annoys me, is when you go for a job, like they say to you, oh, you have to make sure you're with, you're with a union. Mm -hmm. Because they help you. I'm like, well, and my question was, immediately, was like, why do I have to be with a union? In, all, in order to be given what I should be getting. Getting anywhere, yeah. They don't, I don't think... Yeah. I mean, especially, it's, I've had a few of my other friends, you know, say the same thing. Like, my mental health wasn't taken seriously at work. Do you know what I mean? And I was just told to yeah. come with it and stuff. It's, in, mental health in this country is just not classed as serious. No, listen, I mean, I remember one point... <clears throat> um, because because with my situation, I mean, I know I've done courses and I do have the accreditations mm. to where I can um, start work or become self-employed. Mm -hmm. right? And I'll be honest, like, I am currently receiving benefit. Mm -hmm. No, it's not something that I want to be doing, there's but... No, there's no shame in that. I've got, but, is that, but I've got to live, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately. Um, and plus with what we went through with the lockdown and everything, mm -hmm. the work environment is not looking that good. Well, just with the amount of job losses. I don't like this country yeah. for that reason as well. Like people on benefits are shamed as well. And it's like... Exactly. You know, I, I received a certain benefit as well. So it's like... Yeah. Yeah, it's... It's, so, it's like... Um, I don't, so I don't care. It's like people who receive benefit have this certain stereotype. Oh, now for some people, now for some people, that stereotype is true. Mm. 
But for the vast majority, yeah. it's not. There's a few little but, minority, but most yeah. people are just struggling and just need the money. I mean, I hate this government, what they've done. I mean, there's all these programmes like benefit fraudsters and can't pay, we'll take it away and stuff. And it just makes people with issues that are struggling look like criminals. <coughs> and I hate it. Do you know what I mean? It's happened to me. You yeah. know, in the past, you know, people have messaged me to say, oh, you know, you just, you con in people and stuff like that. And, you know, get a proper job and stuff like that. And it's like, my heart goes out to people like you, you know, like people that yeah. you know, have got mental health issues and that's struggling, but uh, wanting to help other people because it takes, it does take a lot of strength, you know, and people need to be rewarded more for it. Exactly. Uh, it's like, you know, I mean, listen, you can say what you want to me, like, it'll go in one ear and out the other. Like, it doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. Right? I've got, like, a, a tough exterior, tough skin. But even though, but even that tough exterior that you're portraying as a mask, yeah. like, you're doing that because it's your coping mechanism. Yeah. That's how you cope. But they only see what people will only see what they want to see. Mm, that is true. When you say something, they will they will only take away what they want to hear. Yeah, most of the time. Like right, now, is that yeah? Now is that selfish on their part? Maybe. Or is it the fact that? As men, we still have this stigma of mm. shut up, get on with it. Yeah. Stiff up a lip. It's just you know, your man, what your man, what have you got to be like upset about? Depressed about, yeah, it's true, it is ridiculous. Yeah. I and mean, I hate that. You know, and Yeah, and you know, this is why you know, I do say the women are better at talking about their feelings. Mm. You know, women are more open. They're more emotional. We've been women are brought up to to do it. Yeah, you know, and it's like at school. It's yeah. like, well, boys don't cry, and we need strong men, and you know, we need men that are brave and stuff. And it's it may, no wonder the male suicide rate is so high because exactly. men don't have an outlet. And it's like I've got my dad, and he's got depression as well. And it's like he was he he went brought uh, he was brought up in the sixties, and it's like if he cried, he got the cane, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, my yeah, my um my father I'll name and I've got a different word but I'll keep it PG father. Mm -hmm. Um he was born in fifty four. So he grew up during the sixties and mm -hmm. you know he the way he were the way he treated the way he was towards me was probably the same way his father was towards him. Um, you know, it's that, it's that mindset, you know, it's that era. Um, I mean, my dad was an alcoholic, um, the whole side of his family are. Um, but we were getting to that a bit further on, but, uh, mm -hmm. but you know, people have asked me, like, you know, my mate, like, a few days ago, like, he was struggling, okay. um, it was temp, it was a temp, like, Having suicidal thoughts, and so I was there for him. Okay. Um, no. And if I was to give any any advice out of this, is if you have someone who has suicidal thoughts or suicidal ideation, and you have a close relationship with them, just be there for them. Yeah. Don't say anything. Just sew up. This is what you've got to say, and just be quiet. By right? just being here for them, let them vent. No matter how crazy or how disturbed, it, disturbing it may get because of their thoughts, just listen. Because that's all they want. They don't want to. They don't want to end their life. You no. Know? Because that because that annoys me, mm -hmm. right? It's the kind of people who commit suicide or are on the the ropes of it. 
the majority of the time it's for the help. Mm. Or it's their last ditch effort to call the help. Like there was um uh Bennington. Um it was a, a singer for Linkin Park. Oh Linkin Park, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right, the same thing happened to him. Well, like, I, he I, called for I kind of, you know, I've seen Linkin Park twice actually. And in some of the lyrics, especially <clears throat> in one of the, the later albums, like when you read the lyrics, like one of the, the lyrics is goodbye and stuff and no light. Yeah, if you, um, it was a bit cryptic and I kind of thought maybe this is going to happen, but I didn't read too much into it because I thought, you know, the lyrics right. are anyway, but you never know, you know, what's going on. Yeah. You never know. Exactly, what's... exactly. Mm. You know, I mean... If you is if you listen to the song in the end. Yeah. Good song. That um yeah. Um I mean you've had so many people like who may not have necessarily passed away due to suicide, but they have had mental health issues mm. or died from any other causes, but it but it's just like the system as a whole. Like I did a tweet about this, excuse me, a few days ago or something. Like this government has been shocking. Like just had a like a, a PSA. Like I don't vote. I don't believe in the government. Like that's me. If you want to carry on voting for them, that is your choice. You are more than that is your right in this country. I vote for. But like, you vote. have a right to use the vote. I don't vote Tory. I vote Labour. But at the moment, I'm not sure. Because I'm not really keen. On, I don't, I'll, I'm not keen on Starmer, to be honest. I was more keen on Corbyn, but it, it, yeah. is, it, it is true that this Tory government has cut more mental health services <coughs> than any other government. This, 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 this evil Tories, um, and I mean it's true. You know, I've been looking at the stats. You yeah. know, so many mental hospitals have been shut down. Learn disability funding's been shut down. Suicide hotlines. I mean, there's a there's a rape centre in Leeds for women that have been domestically assaulted, and you know that's been shut down and turned into a block of flats, and that is a fact. You know, so it just it pisses me off. So I am very passionate about yeah. it as well. Yeah. Yeah, and you know that is, and you know that is your right. I like myself. I do not. I do not vote, and that is my right. I just because. A certain, you know, member of government or whatever said, "Oh, they'll do this, do that." To me, I have that a bullshit meter. Like mm. I can just sense, sense bullshit. I'm like, "No, sir, I don't believe you." I just don't. Like, why am I gonna? Plus, this may get a bit. Like, you may understand this, but like, do this. Well, this is my opinion anyway. Okay. The only reason they're wanting to give you a vote, right, is because on the man on the manifesto that they write out, hmm. they put everything that they're gonna do, but really they're not gonna do all of that. They just they're just saying that because they wanna get your vote. Hmm. And once they get your vote, it's almost as if it's like, okay, right, sort of way, oh they're gonna do this. So that's why I don't vote, because I don't trust them. I don't trust, like, I mean, maybe that's partly down to what I've been through. That's, yeah, that's fine. Could be the case. I mean, for me, I'd, I'd, I, just don't, I just don't trust them. For me, I trusted Corbyn, but I don't trust anyone else. I trusted Corbyn, now, but nobody voted for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, but yeah. But this, but this government with both sides and, like, no, sorry. Numpties, um, horrible. Yeah, <clears throat> because you had um, oh, what's his face? You had Matt Hancock, mm. who was put into was he the health and safety minister? Yeah, he what? Yeah, got sacked, didn't he? Yeah, but the funny thing is, the 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 degree that he's got a uni isn't in health and safety. Mm-mm. Well, the, so you've got so so you've got sorry. 
It's one rule for us and then one rule for them. Yeah, exactly. So in that in that house, you've got members in a certain department. One, they don't have the qualification mm -hmm. to do that. Two, they don't know what the f FNL they're doing. And it's like, like I just said, like it's one more for them, one more for, one more for us. And Biz, I mean, don't even get me started on, on the whole lockdown thing because I was just a, a debacle. Mm. The amount of money we've lost, the amount of money we've lost, the amount of people who's lost their jobs, but we are in an economic crisis as we speak. Mm. We've now got the Ukraine Russia situation. Which is quite scary. Quite scary. But it's like we've already been through enough. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, as a country. Because I, because I could kick my head out, like, is it going to get any better? And it's like, honestly, I want this to get better because, you know, but then I sit down and think about it logically and I'm like, well, in reality, no. But, you know, it's like, we'll do what we can, we'll do the best we can and we'll move forward and hopefully... We can move on in a, in a year or two years' time and revamp the economy and get everyone working again. But I know this for a fact that the NHS, mm. we've always known this, has been underfunded. Mm. Deliberately, yeah. Massively. Mm -hmm. It always has been. Like, they always say, oh, we're going to put money to it, but they, but they don't. The mental health service, Underfunded. Yep. Massively. Deliberate. Police, police, been un massive, the um, police system has been massively underfunded. Yep. I felt that recently. Yeah, and it's like, again, maybe this is just me because I like, because I like going out of deep dive and think about these things, right? Um, it's like, how good are we as a nation? Because we're not, because... Not very. That's my because we're, that. Yeah, exactly. Like, that, there's a saying that... Because way, I remember... Sorry, go on. Yeah, sorry, go on. There's a saying that the way you treat... The way a country it treats <clears throat> the ill and the disabled, you know, is a measure of, you know, how you know, what a country's like. And our country treats our mentally ill and disabled like scum, you know. So, no, I, I, I don't like this country. And that's me being real, you know. There's so many other countries, like no. Norway, no. you know, that actually have a decent way of doing things. It ain't perfect, but it's better than this, you know. Like, homeless people. I mean, homeless people in Leeds, you know, are arrested, you know. And, like, the sleeping bags are confiscated. You know, let's say you turn up to... A and E, you know, with suicidal thoughts, you have to sit in a waiting room for ages only to be sent home again. It's not working. Yeah. Terrible. No, it's not. And it's like listen, on on a level, right, am I am I grateful to be, to be living in a country where we don't have to deal with what Ukraine and other third world countries have to deal with. Absolutely, I'm grateful. Yeah, sure. I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. But our system does not work. Nope. And I, I had a conversation with my mate, and I, said, and I was like, I said to him, like, what? They, do, what? they, should, they should just disband it, just, just, mean, just, uh, just dismantle the government. They should lock be. it down, tape it down, like, because. For, because the national the NHS has been underfunded for ten years. Mm -hmm. Add another ten. Add another ten years onto that. Mm -hmm. Probably add another ten. Yep. <laughs> so let's just say, for example, it's been thirty years plus been underfunded. Deliberate. Mental health service. Yeah. Say, 
at a post maybe 20. Right. Plus the social workers are underfunded. Plus what happened to the two little babies oh, yeah. doesn't exactly help. Yeah, that's yeah, it's tragic. Yeah. Um but yeah, um that's my thoughts. Like if you want to vote, you go and vote. Obviously do your research. You know, who you want to vote for, make sure it's the right <coughs> policies and all of that. And go for it. Mm-hmm. But, but I'm just gonna, but I'm just gonna like not vote. And obviously, See, that is up to you. Yeah, you know, like, I'm I'm on the left. And exactly. I'm quite socialist. <coughs> um, like I said, I'm not voting at the moment, but I did vote for Corbyn because I I liked what he was saying and I trusted him. But I don't trust Starmer. But yeah, um, do you want to talk about you know the the podcast that you do for people? You know, maybe you know. Yeah. Um... So, yeah, moving swiftly on from that, I do a <laughs> podcast with, <laughs> no, with my... Um, no, I could talk yeah, about it all, with my, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a... Um, yeah, exactly. I am a socialist, yeah. and, you know, and yeah. my whole channel is about, you know, improving things. I'm not bothered if people don't, but I, I do have a problem, though. If people are Boris Johnson supporters. Like, I don't really... I'm not friends with Boris Johnson supporters. So, goodbye, <laughs> people. <laughs> So, I do a podcast with my friend. Mm. It's called The Hidden, um, where we obviously discuss mental health. Mental health. Mm -hmm. We recently discussed um, the situation regarding Will Smith. Okay. Um. Whereas I found out, I think last night or the night before, that he was, has been banned for 10 years. Which mm, is a bit tricky considering they put him in, in the list mm-hmm. along with Bill Cosby and, you know, Harvey Weinstein, which mm-hmm. it's not in there. No. I mean, he shouldn't have done uh, what he did. He shouldn't have hit no. you know, Chris Rock. But I, he shouldn't have been having a go at Jada. Do you know what I mean? And that's why violence is never good. But if if someone was up there making fun of my, you know, girlfriend or family member, like I'd probably lose my rag. I probably wouldn't punch them, but I'd probably storm out and be like, "F off." Do you know what I mean? I mean, I don't like Chris Rock personally, but I think yeah, I think ten years is ridiculous. Yeah, but. Yeah, so we covered that. We covered um, talk, we covered the um, Instagram documentary on BBC iPlayer. So yeah, we've covered. We've done twenty episodes of that. Okay. Um, on my podcast, which is called Ses- Sessions. Um, yeah. I discuss important a variety of topics and subjects within mental health, LGBTQ+. Um, I recently did a, a podcast episode interview with Danny Reardon, who yeah, yeah. was a it. former, yeah, who was a former IFBB pro, women's physique. She is now a yoga teacher and a spiritualist. Um. Uh, that will be going out later today, today at 1 pm her time. Um, yeah, I saw it on the Facebook page. Yeah, um, so yeah, I do that. My podcast, I do an episode every four to five days, so at least a, a new episode every, every week. The one I do with my friends, who we've been best friends for nearly. 20 years. All right. Um, we met in 2004. Um, we do that whenever we can because obviously he works for the NHS. Mm-hmm. And he's also um, a writer himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
So yeah, we do that every whenever we can. But yeah, uh, apart from aside from that, I just mainly try and keep myself busy. Yeah. The more the busy I am, the better, because my brain can never shut off. I can relate to that. There's always yeah. I can yeah. yeah. Like, I can, like, I'll give you an example, right? I could, like, um, Friday, like, early Saturday morning, I fell asleep at quarter to four in the morning, and I, did, and I didn't wake up until almost 5 p.m. I, I wake up. Yeah, I wake up. I'm so tired. Mm-hmm. I'm up. I'm so tired. I wake up and I'm up for say ten hours or whatever. Yep, I can relate. I go to sleep. Wake up. I'm so tired. Even though I'm awake and I've been up. I'm so tired. So it's like my my sleeping pattern has been crap, mm-hmm. or it has been. You know. But I do the best I can. But yeah, I do self care. I do meditation. You know, every morning. I have done CB. I've done. I have gone to therapy. Um, once, but my therapist rubbed me the wrong way. She said a few things, and I'm like, I'm so nah. And I haven't been back. So I've been. So again, another advice. Right. Don't do what I do. If you need help, ask reach out. Go to a therapist. But right? don't do what I did because it may have worked for me, but I'm still struggling. I'm still I'm still having to do certain things to obviously cope. Okay. So always make sure you have a, a therapist on hand or that you can get into, in contact with. Because even though you know, the Samaritans may not be good mm. or whatever, still be able to help because it's important. Yeah, I mean, the Samaritans but, are good. But I'm going to say this, um, not everyone can afford a therapist. Um, I mean, exactly. money's not an for me, but a lot of people can because um, a lot of therapists are quite expensive, you know, 40, 50 pound. Um, and if people are, let's say, not working and living on benefits, people probably won't be able to afford it. And I think that exactly. I think that is an issue um, because then you know you put on these NHS waiting lists that never end, <laughs> that you know go on for years. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> my the the previous doctor, like I have a doctor, but my, the, but the one before that, she was amazing. She was, I, I it's very it's very rare that you actually get. In my experience, you get a doctor that actually listens to you, mm. and she did. She listened mm. to me, like she took it. She took my concerns seriously. Like we had a really good working relationship. Now I, I don't know if she's moved, but I'm now with a new doctor okay. who, let's just say, his bedside manner needs a bit of work. <laughs> He's not very good at his job. Um, hence why I haven't been in contact with him for a number of months. Mm-hmm. But that aside, um, I just, I have a little, I have a bag of tricks. So I have CBT, NLP, which I've also done a course on, and I've got my accreditation for that. So I'm always trying to I'll do as much as I can. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's the best way. Like, I think it just distracts yeah. you, do you know what I mean? Like me, I'm always up. I mean, I can relate. Yeah. I sleep all sorts of hours. <laughs> but I've always, like, I've got, like, a planner. So, like, I plan what I'm going to do. And I just try and cram my days full of stuff. Like, I've studied as well. Um, obviously, I'm writing my book. Yeah. I do these. I do a lot of motivational videos. I do some walking now and again. I just, I think... You're right, the best thing is to keep busy because when you sat not doing much, your thoughts just get the better of you, you know? 
Exactly, it's like, you know, and obviously, you know, I am fortunate in that I am able to use somewhat of a platform. Mm -hmm. um, I have that thing, like, oh, what's it called? Anyway, nah, forget it. I'll think of it in a minute. Um, where I can go to my Facebook page, yeah, or my group, and I can do a live, like have a catch up, and that is my therapy. Oh yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. So well, I, found I am fortunate in that. I found this therapy, you know, connecting with other people and like sharing experiences. Yeah. Like, is it, it is, and I mean, there's a lot of downsides of social media, but for me. Especially on Twitter, I've met a hell of a lot of supportive people, you know, and like people like us, you know, that are campaigning yeah. for better. Yeah, exactly. It's like on my Twitter, like, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I don't really tweet a lot, but when I do use Twitter, I do like a writer's lift. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I'll do that. Um, you know, to give back, sort of, like, to, you know, help other people, you know, find new um, avenues or whatever. Um, the same on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I have um, a tattoo um, appreciation page where I have, where I accept um, artists' tattoo work, and I credit them. I've got a lot of tattoos. Right? <laughs> Hell of a lot yeah. of that too. Um, Just a few. And that is my, yeah, and that is my um, escapism. Like I said, if I, um, I don't want to see anything more about mental health or I want to switch off, mm -hmm. I go on that Instagram account and I just scroll through. Yeah. And I share. That's, my, that's another way of me giving back. You know, so, because you always have to, have little, have the little things to yourself. Yeah. Because yeah. as much as I would love to spend all day, <coughs> all day, spending hours and hours of time helping people, being there for people, it can get... Draining. Draining, yeah, and overwhelming because... Mm -hmm. I have people in my group and on my page who have, who are very, very sensitive, they are very complex. Yeah. Right, like, you know, um, some have learning, learning disabilities, some have schizophrenia, schizophrenia mm -hmm. and those sort of things. You know, so, even though I do suffer with mental health, obviously, I, you know, one, I don't suffer with schizophrenia, Mm -hmm. So I'm dealing with, so I'm trying to help people, you know, not go off the deep end, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I come so yeah, it gets draining. So I need an outlet. You know, yeah. and that's where my self-care comes in. Yeah. You know, I try group. and... Yeah. Yeah. Um, with the group that I run, run as well, I mean, sometimes I just have to take a few days from it. Um, because... Yeah. Yeah, some of the posts are quite depressing. I mean, sometimes I get messages saying, you know, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? And I've had to kind of change the rules because there was one point where people were messaging me every day, you know, saying, can you come and can you come and help me with this? And it was just too much. But, you know, we, yeah, do have, to, it's like, we have to set boundaries as well. Yeah, that, yeah that's... Um, I would really say that, right? Boundaries are important. Mm. Not just for you, but it's also for other people. Yeah. And when I first started my group, um, you know, I was doing it all by myself. Mm. And then it got to a point where I had to, I had to have help. So now I've got a, a small group of admin mm. moderators that help me. Um, I don't. I, I don't expect them to do everything. I just, you know, it's teamwork. I say, yeah. Um, 
that side will be in will be increasing um, for the um, rotation purposes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's what my whole day from morning to night is mental health, um, checking in, checking up, um, seeing how my posts are doing on my page. Mm -hmm. And obviously, doing a bit of research for upcoming podcasts. Yeah. Um, Which very for I'll mine. Be, I'll be happy uh, to, to be on. You know, I'll definitely like to be on it. Yeah. Well, yeah, we can discuss that and discuss a schedule at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, having it at you know, on my one, it's more, it's more of a I do do research. But it's more of an unscripted, in-depth conversation. Uh -huh. I like to, I like to, I like it for it to be natural. Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the one I do with a friend that's more off the cuff. We we'll just like we all obviously discuss topic, and then we'll just see how it goes. Sort of thing. Thing. Um, because I'm because I'm quite bad at going off going. Off topic and on a tangent, I so I have to really. I, hug. I never. I noticed, have to I really never, try. I never noticed, Taron. <laughs> well, well, thank you for saying that because I'm really, because I'm trying. Because um, otherwise, it'll be a half an hour of me just just going from one topic to another. So I'm, I'm really trying. I'm yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. You know, it's like. Also, obviously, with, with the courses that I've done, and obviously, I'll, I would love to, I want to go to a point where, and I'm like you, I'm not bothered about the money. Like, this, what I'm doing is a passion. Yeah. It's something that I love. But the same in the podcast, like, I'm not, like, I do, I do it because I enjoy it. You know, I get to, well, I had my first guest. I had an amazing conversation with her, right? It went better than I expected. You know, that's all that matters to me. As long as I can help people, mm. that's all that matters to me. I don't care about the money, right? Yeah. And, you know, like mm. you had a situation where, like, people are questioning you, like, mm. like, oh, you're cunning. Well, no. Mm. But I'm, I really care. It's un, but it's just unfortunate that when it, when it suits Hollywood mm. in terms of mental health, they'll speak about it, right? But then with their massive platforms, mm. after that, they don't do anything. No, it's just like... Now, they don't have... It's just like for a yeah. few days, it's like, oh, mental health, and then it just disappears. Yeah. It's like... Nothing. Now... Now, I do want to say that, you know, obviously, obviously because they're in the back, they're in the public eye, right, and everyone follows them, and obviously, you know, whatever they're working on is out in the media. I'm not saying that all, all Hollywood A-listers should put everything, everything that, they, that they do behind the scenes on social media. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is when they do a cause, right, they start speaking about it for a day, or donate to the check, which, okay, that helps. But, you know, talk about it. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. You know, like, um, like the, the guy who played um, Iron Man. Right? Um, I don't remember his name now. But he, he was a former addict. Okay. Right? I don't know if he does anything outside of what he, does, what he posts. But I would like to see him. You know, mm. use your platform, mm. right? But they don't. Mm. Now I don't know if that's because it's their team telling them, Tell telling them. them not to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but and but you know, there's that. But it's like I really do think that. We need to have, we should have a, 
a facility, mm. like, like they do it in Las Vegas, where it's open 24-7. Mm. You've got gyms, you've got, a, I've got a gym, like 15 minutes from the road from me that's open 24-7. Yeah. Why can't we have a clinic for mental health like that? Well, people, well, we're done, but, you know, the the NHS people will say, well, it's A&E, you know, <coughs> that's their response, but A&E is not a place for somebody struggling, you know, in the past when I was... A&E, A &E for, well, yeah, but if I broke, if I broke my neck... Exactly, yeah, it's not a place... I'd get into, right? If you're struggling, exactly. I mean, when I was struggling, so, when I was sent to A&E... I felt so nervous sitting there and it's like, oh, you need to wait here. And it's like, it, it made me worse. I was so scared just waiting in that waiting room. And then when I was eventually seen, it was like, I only got like maybe 15 minutes and then they said, well, there's no beds and you know, there's not what can do go on basically. It's like, what a waste of time. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, I just, my my routine, even though it's crap, my routine is to get up. I don't watch the news. Um, if I do want to catch up, I'll give myself five minutes. I'll do a little catch up, and then that, that's me. I'm off. Mm. Um, I put YouTube on. You know, I watch films or whatever. Mm. That's my that's me down. That's my downtime. Um, along with everything else that I do, and. Um, you, know, you can probably see that even though I'm up, you know, I'm going to be up until probably 7 o'clock this evening. But, I, but I'm still tired. But as you know, that's life. I, you have to put with it. Um, but, yeah, it's like, with, the, with everything going on, I'll, I just want to hide, my, hide myself in my room, be left alone, um, be, be sit with, and sit with me, and sit with my own thoughts. Yeah, there's nothing, now, wrong, there's nothing wrong with being alone, but I think we need no. to continue to be creative, and we need to continue yeah. to not let the dark thoughts take over, do you know what I mean? Because... I, like I said, you know, I commend you for doing the, the studies because studying for me has changed my life because it gives me something to focus on. Like, you know, when I'm reading the books and the course books and like the materials, it just, it changed me. It gave me a routine, you know, even if I'm getting up at the... Exactly. Yeah. And it's, I recommend it to anybody. Yeah, I do too. I mean... I mean, I already, how can I phrase this? Because I don't want to ever, because, you know, I'm no one, you know. Right? I may have struggled with mental health for 20 plus years, or whatever, mm -hmm. right? But I don't know everything, and I don't, and I don't ever pretend to be. I'm not, right? If everyone, if someone ever thinks that, if someone ever said to me that they think I'm not all, then they've misread me because mm -hmm. I'm not an old, but I don't know everything, right? But what I do, but the stuff I do know has been further improved upon mm. through me doing the courses I have. Yeah, same. Yeah, I've got my so, own. Yeah, I've got my own lived experience as well. I know what works for me and yeah. what doesn't, but I've also. You know, I've, I've studied, you know, psychology as well. So, but when I, I hate that, yeah. you know, it's, I think the biggest thing is going through it. Like, this is why I don't like the mental health system as well, because, you know, just because you've got, just because you're a nurse or because you're a doctor doesn't mean that you've got all the answers. And I say this, you know, because they've not been through it. They've not experienced it, you know, and, like us, you know, if we've been through the lowest point and if we've experienced it, we we can relate to it. And I think that's that that that, that has been my medicine. I mean, ever since I started connecting more with with other survivors, you know, I've I felt so much better. 
Yeah, because it's that because it's that connection. Mm. You could you could sit in a sit in a room with five people, mm. right? You don't know their background. Nope. Right. They may have been to similar situations to you, or even worse. Or they, or they may not, have, may not have gone through it, but they may have PTSD from it. Mm-hmm. Right? But you all have one common ground. You all have a lived experience. Yeah. And that's the, I think that's the right? most important thing, if I'm honest with you. For me, it's... Yeah. Exactly, and that's why, and that's why I create, I, you know, created the private group. Yeah, you know, because as much as my main, my main page is doing well, mm-hmm. and it's, you know, and obviously I want, and obviously I want that to grow even more. To, you know, um, and I'll put, I'll put the, I link, did the private, I'll put the links. In yeah, I'll the send you here for anybody yeah. that's watching this video back. Um, I've put the links in the description so you can yeah. follow and join and even request to go on the, the podcast if, you, if you'd like to chat. Yeah. Um, I will... Um, and obviously, if you want support in a, in a lovely group, right, you've obviously got Michelle's group, uh, but you've all got... I'll, I'll send Michelle the, the links after this. and You're more than welcome to to join if you want the help but yeah it's like that's one of the main reasons why I created the private group because I noticed that yes there are already mental health pages on Facebook, on Facebook with a larger platform right but a lot of them and I've been quite a few they don't their way of offering help isn't the way I would do it, so I create my own group, mm-hmm. and you know I go I go live as often as often as I can. You know, I, obviously I, I stick to a schedule. Uh, my admins help; they come on when they can. You know, because they've got their own lives. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not expecting them to be on twenty four seven, like other groups would. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. No, it's just, and a lot, and the majority of them are don't even post. They're just quiet, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. No, um, but yeah, it's all about reaching out. Um, like right, you know, it does get tiring. Like it does get like this is the this is the dichotomy because. When you are so busy, busy to, a, busy to a point where it's that's right for you, mm. it comes it comes difficult when you're trying to wind down, yeah, and mm-hmm. take time out for yourself because then you know, I'm, I mean I'm not saying I'm not suggesting that you sit there and twiddle your thumbs <laughs> by looking at like looking out for walls, <laughs> right? But like you could be sat still. Yeah, my thoughts but, always. But really, this, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah. I need to do this. I need to do this. You know? Yeah, it's like I'll give you an example. Like me, I'm a, I'm I'm a homebody. I'm I prefer my own company. Same. But I always, I always have right. But I'm a I'm a massive introvert. Yeah, um, I don't think I could live with anybody now. No, no. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't socialize. But I, but the way I describe it is, you know that you know a meter in a car, yeah, like you know the fuel gauge. Mm. Imagine that's imagine me. That's a fuel gauge. Yeah, but it's only got half of it left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's only as much as I can spend with someone, and then I'm good. I'm good. Right? So, yeah, but my mate is completely different. Right, he, but he's an introvert, but he's more of an extroverted introvert. Okay. Like he's more social than me. Yeah, right? yeah. And he and he struggles. I mean, for me, because he'd have to. Sorry. Because, 
let's say, because when he has finished work, like, instead of, like, somebody going home after work and then that's it, mm. he can't, he can't, he can't stay in. He has to always be on a move. Okay. So, he's not, so, he's not comfortable. He, so, basically, he can't do what I do, which is totally fine. Mm. But, but that's a, that's a dichotomy of like having two people with the same illnesses. For, well, he's got Asperger's, and so he has to do all of these things because mm. he can't stay in the house. <laughs> and it's, and there's me trying to teach, trying not to not teach him, you know, but explain to him that at some point he will have to come to terms and be able to sit inside the house mm. with, his, with his thoughts at some point because I know the, I know the reasons why he's doing it but it's an escapism mm. he, he's trying to escape he's trying to escape the, un, the unescapable he, because you know, we've been for walks we don't like walks so it's that's helped, but even but at the end of the walks, I can see I can still see that he is anxious about going back home. Mm. You know because not of maybe of the thoughts or maybe whatever. But he has started therapy. Okay, good. Um, which you know which. I'm not, I don't I don't credit it, but I just suggest that he should go to therapy because he wants to really struggle in. Mm-hmm. Um, prior to that, I suggested that he should go on medication because he didn't want to take medication. It's not for everybody. But I would just say to him that it's not for everyone. Like, I take it, and I, I don't like taking it, but I take it because no. I've got no, no other option. I take medication for my depression, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, he so... He's doing a lot better. Good. He has his routine. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, he, you know, he does yoga like yeah in the morning to obviously, you know, release endorphins and all that. Mm-hmm. So that's what he does. Um, meanwhile, I'm just in my four walls doing what I want to do. Well, that's fine. Matter, you know. Like and I'm the same, you know. It, I, and it works. I really yeah. don't really go out that much. I do now and again, but maybe once a week or once a fortnight, I might go and visit somebody. Like that's about it. Like I don't really have people around that much because I just love my own company. Like I'm a very quiet person. Like I might appear like I'm doing a lot. Like I don't mind speaking to people on here, but it's different. Like having someone in your house all the time. Do you know what I mean? Like. Nah, I like to live on my own, you know, definitely. I have my own space. Yeah. I, like, I rarely leave the house. I leave the house once a fortnight because I've got my appointments and that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got an appointment. I've got an appointment today and I've got another appointment on Thursday. Okay. But that's for um, a tattoo. Okay, nice. Um, and then on the same day, I'm I've tr- I treated myself, and I'm going and because of my social anxiety, I'm like public. Nope. Mm-hmm. I'm going to test myself. I'm going to go. I'm going to a gig. It's um, Gino Birch. All right. Attack of attack of stunning. I treat myself to. VIP tickets, so I'm going to go to that on Thursday as well. All right, okay. To 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 test myself, you know, because I because I, I got I've gotten to a point where I obviously I do it because you know I don't have a panic attack, but I'm getting to a point now where I need to start testing myself, testing the waters. Just do it when you're ready. So going, you know what I mean? There isn't any rush. Yeah. Just do it at your own pace, no. though. Yeah. yeah, so I'm going to do so I'm going to do that on Thursday, and you know, hopefully survive. Yeah, 
Yes, hopefully. No, I think I'll be. I think I'll be. Yeah, I think I'll be fine. I've just got to, you know, not. I've just got to calm and calm myself down. You should be okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, but yeah, I've got that to look forward to later on in the week. But yeah, apart from that, I'll when I get back to, later today, mm. I'll just be back at my normal. Normal grief, put YouTube on, catch up on, you know, um, actually, yeah, um, in terms of YouTube, mm -hmm. um, I listen to, again, this isn't fair to one, but I listen to, um, ASMR videos. Oh, no, no, they're not for me. <laughs> oh, can't, no. I know, yeah. I found them annoying. Oh, Oof, no. <laughs> I've always, they've always, they've always, they've always worked with me mm -hmm. as a, as a kid. So okay. I do that. I watch some of my favorite YouTubers. Like I watch Rolly Rest, okay. um, Luxuria, and just the fun, uplifting content. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but, I watch Pokemon. Or I'll even yeah, I watch Pokemon. Yeah, or if I want to watch a comedy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put I'll put on Lee Evans. Oh, I like Lee Evans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Roadrunner. Yeah. Dave. Or I'll put. Yeah. Or I'll put on. Or if I want a bit of a bit of a Scottish flavour, I'll put on Billy Connolly. Yeah, I like Billy Connolly as well. I think his dad. I, uh, he he's got Parkinson's. Oh right, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, to uplift the mood. You know, and that sort of thing. So always, so always have at least a top four or top three of his fave mm. as your go to. You know, I mean, I've subscribed to about to over a hundred channels, and I probably only watch like ten of them. <laughs> yeah, but you know, but it, but. It's what keeps me occupied because I don't have to. Because I could just put my headphones on, have that in the background mm -hmm. while I'm doing something else. Mm -hmm. I even have audio books on my phone, so you no, know, because I can't. Because I'm just I'm dyslexic, so I can't. So it's hard for me to read. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I so I'm more of a. So I'd rather have an audio book, right? Um do what I need to do because then at least I'm learning mm. something whilst I'm doing something else yeah so it's killing two birds with one stone so um, I'll say this before um, we'll go in a few minutes um, but what plans what other plans have you got um, in terms of mental health campaigning um do you think you will? Hmm, I'm not sure. Do you think you'll do any other platforms? I mean, I know that you are on YouTube, and do you think you'll do that out more? Um, that's a good question, and the answer to that is. The way YouTube is going, mm. it is difficult with with their rules. Yeah, I don't. I don't. If, they, if you was, yeah, I don't make any money. I know, I know but I want to. Yeah, but um, I at the moment. <laughs> but in terms of the rules of like, you can't you can't say this word, mm. like or whatever. I'm not. I'm not the type. I'm sure you're probably you're probably the same. But I'm not the type of person that you can censor. I don't want to be. I don't want to be censored because <laughs> this this video is going to be demonetized if I put it up because we've we've sworn in it. So it's like nope. But, yeah, it is a bit. Strange. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I mean, I use YouTube for obviously, like I just said, watching videos and. You know, subscribing to other people. Like, so in terms of me using it as, you know, 
as you do. I think no. I think it it it'd work just as well. I mean, this TikTok as well. I mean, I don't use that TikTok though, but a lot of people do. Yeah. A lot of people are using it. I mean, I don't think I will, but yeah, um, you've got quite a big base on Facebook. Um, and yeah. Then, you know, I've, I've, I'm going to put the links to Torrens things in the description, so you know, go and follow for you know. Yeah, it's like mental health discussions. Yeah, it's like the thing. The thing is. Mm. Is that, uh, and this is some, and I, and this is um, something that I had to, um, I had to regroup and sort out a lot of stuff. Is that I, where I, uh, I basically tied myself out to the point where at this, at this particular point, I was doing way too much mm. and I have to scale back. Okay. And so between so between the Facebook, the group, um Twitter, um my podcast Instagram that I'm on now, uh, my tattoo account that's enough for me. Okay. I I'll see I have you. enough energy I'll say this, I recommend yeah. getting um, Buffer or Hootsuite, I use Buffer. I don't, it's not always me that's posting. I, I, I get like a program and I set it so it posts when I want it to post, so I don't have to be there. It just posts automatically. So Yeah, yeah. I, I use, um, I have used Buffer before, but I use um, Creator Studio. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you set? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What inside of Facebook? It's a Creator Studio. is a separate app for you download, yeah. and you see, and within the app, you can schedule posts. All right, yeah, yeah. What, and that, yeah. so what, it's a separate app. All right, I didn't know that. Yeah, and basic and is because don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. Buffer is great. Mm-hmm. But the only downside to it is, if you want to post more than, let's say, 10, mm. you have to pay. Yeah. Whereas Creator Studio is free. Because yeah, I, I, normally, I normally post between 10 to upwards of 12 posts. A day? Depending. Wow, okay, okay. A day, depending. Um, but that's just me. Um, but yeah, so in terms of YouTube, me doing YouTube, no, um, too much for me. Um, I'd rather I'd rather use Facebook <laughs> as my main content, um, because that's where my, my main audience is. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and I'd rather use Instagram. For my podcast to grow that, so yeah. Okay, but it makes sense, doesn't um, it? You know, because if you got you're yeah. doing too many different things, you, you know, you can't manage. Um, <laughs> I was gonna, like I said, I was gonna start using TikTok, but I just don't think I've got the time I have, and I don't really get it. Yeah. Um, I was. I did use TikTok for. A week, but then I got bored. Yeah, you can't, you can't post like long things. It's sort of like little short clips. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. Um. So I know for everyone who may who will watch this, um, I know that we didn't. Well, I know that I didn't delve deep into my, um, my story. Um, as it were, you, you can if you want, but uh, only if you want. To, um, you know, only if you want to. No, yeah, we can dive. We can dive into it. Obviously, I will, obviously I'll keep it PG. I won't go into the specific details, but yeah. So, excuse me. So, I was between. So first of all, well, so I won't go, I won't stay ages. I'll just 
keep it as brief as I can. Mm -hmm. um, I was emotionally, emotionally and physically abused by my father, who was the alcoholic. Um, the emotional abuse came first, and then the physical abuse came after. Up until um, this was from, say, but the emotional was between, say, seven and nine. Basically, anything he says, what the, you know, like harsh words and all that. Mm. Um, and then the physical, physical abuse started around 10 till the age of 12. So there was not, there wouldn't be a day go back, a day goes, a day has gone by where I wouldn't get, you know, punched, and etc. Um, you know, even if it you know, because believe it or not, I was a very shy kid, and I wouldn't stand up for myself. So if I didn't do that, I would get a beating. If I didn't do this, I would get a beating. So, uh, so I, I think you can all like see where I'm going with this. Yeah. Again, to keep it brief, um, and so. At 12 and a half years old, almost 13, um, me, my mum and my brother, who was a baby at the time, um, we left. Well, we sort of lied. Uh, my mum said, um, oh, so we'll go down to the chip shop. Then, yeah. But really, instead of going to the chip shop, we went to the police station. Okay. And then we were moved, moved, and that. So, um, well, yeah. Um, my mum went through hell because of him, obviously. Um, she had seven miscarriages wow. because of him. Wow. Um, Damn. My, my um, sister, um, she lost her life. When she was again, math, when she was, I think, five or six, um, she, um, the, um, the reason for that was, um, I think she swallowed something like a toy. Okay. I can't remember, like, so that, um, So that was obviously took my parents hard. That's not and right. Obviously, losing a child is devastating. Mm. But that does not. But that does not excuse. No. What every child goes through, because every minute a child is getting is getting abused. Sadly. Every minute. Sadly, same with same with domestic violence. Yep. You know, but yeah. So that, and then I came along in in nineteen eighty five. My sister was born in nineteen eighty two. Okay. Um, on the seventeenth of November, I was born in, born in eighty five, the sixteenth of November. Um. So. So basically, if you ever. Follow me, follow me on the Seth Sessions podcast, mm -hmm. Instagram, and the 17th of November comes around and you wonder why I'm not posting, oh. that's because I'm remembering my sister. Um, but, so yeah, um, we left him, um, he tried to, you know, say he'll never do that again, you know, the same old story they say. My mum didn't believe him. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, he wanted me to forgive him, but no. Um, six, five, I think it was six years ago, he passed away due to um, alcoholism. Okay. So, 
basically you have the that's a lot story of that is a lot to be yeah so me. basically yeah and you know um there's a lot of stuff that i haven't unpacked mm -hmm. and i'm sure it's, it can be the same and i'm sure the same can be said for you as well you know it never goes away Nope. There are still some things that I haven't unpacked, I haven't dealt with. You know, people say that I should, well, close friends and that, mm -hmm. so say you should, you should forget. And I'm, I'm sorry, no, you can't. Just, you'll never forget. You can't just forget. No, no. I'm sorry, but I don't believe believe that. No. But yeah, so yeah, so that was the, the briefest explanation. Yeah. Um, because I've yeah, said, you know, I don't want to like, go into explicit. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, and at, four, at 15, 16, I went through um, school. Um, it was tough um, because <clears throat> I'm, sure, I'm sure you were like this as well. With what happened to me, I had to grow up fast. Yeah. So I wasn't like any other normal normal boy mm. yeah. right because i had to because i had to go fast i was basically like an adult in a boy's body yeah i can relate which which isn't good no it makes you stand out because you're not yeah yeah um and so i had to learn how to unpack that as well like or learn who i am mm. This is why I, this is why like I'm a I'm a spiritual person. Mm -hmm. Right, I, I come from a religious family with my ancestors because they, my granddad is from um, Ireland. Okay. Um, I'm not religious like he it, even know it's me with like uh, Saint Christopher, but I'm not yeah. religious at all. I'm more spiritual. Yeah. So I've been finding out about me. What do I want? Mm -hmm. Like, who am I? No, along my journey, <clears throat> and so that's been me. Like you know, I've always I've always struck out. You no, know, I've always been the odd one out. You no know, shy, um, quiet person. It's good to I always say always on his own. It's good to be unique, though. It's good to be yourself because I said this in a yeah. few of my other things. Like, don't you don't always need to follow the crowd because the crowd's often lost. <laughs> you know. No, I mean, as long as you can actually I'm, I'm, find happiness in being who you are, that that is the main thing. And I'm starting to get exactly. Oh yeah, and how old yeah, exactly. You? It's like you know, you're thirty-eight. Is that right? Yeah. No, I'm thirty-six. 36. I keep adding years on thirty. I'll be, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> no, right. I'll be I'll be thirty-seven. Okay. This November. Um. But yeah, it's like, you know, so when I was 15, 16, I, um, I had the, op I had the opportunity of becoming a amateur boxer. All right. I, I had the opportunity, um, but I turned that down because I didn't, because I didn't fancy earning a living by basically getting my face punched in. No, it doesn't appeal to me. No, like, <laughs> no. Like, even though I can look, at, I can look after myself, but mm -hmm. no. So I didn't want to do that. And then that's when I joined a gym, um, did a typical thing, like, you know, as you do. And then I did. Martial, art, martial arts. Okay. I did kickboxing for two years, mm. and I did kung fu um, for almost ten years. All right. Uh, yeah, um, I stopped that because you know uh, my instructor at the time was all about. The money. Mm. I was like, nah, you're right. Um, but I ended up with my light, with my light blue belt. 
Yeah, Kung Fu. So, so you know, I can. So you know, I'm happy, I'm happy with that I can look after myself. You know, you know, not that I've had to use any of it because I'm never anywhere. I'm never in a position to use it. But that's good. I'd, but, you know, I'd rather have it mm-hmm. and not need it. Yeah. And I think, it's, and I think you know, talking, mentioning self-defence classes, I think it should be free. One, I think it should be free, no matter what. And two, I think it should be very, very accessible for women. Yeah, I, th- I think there should be... And young, and young women I think, as well. I think there should be taught in schools, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Because mm. I'm not, because, you know, I'm not, because, unfortunately, you know, even though Sarah Everard was on the news, mm. unfortunately, that's not the case for every single woman. No. I mean, the area that I and live I, in is pretty rough, you know, and... There's, yeah. a, there's a lot of dodgy behaviour like that that goes on around here, so it's, yeah. Yeah, it's like, so like I walk, I walk pretty fast. Mm. So if I'm, like, out and about, even if it's in daylight, and I see a, a woman who is on her own, mm. I consciously cross over. That's respectful, man. Because I, because I, because I know what's going on in her head. Mm. Because she's trying to get home and she's having to, mm. you know, so, you know, that's what I try and do because... That's nice. You know, I mean, I grew up, I, mom, I grew up with my mum who mm. was who brought us up by herself. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I know the dangers mm-hmm. that are, you know, out there for women. So... Mm. You know, because I used to um, chaperone my mum to the shops yeah. when I was nine, ten, late at night. You know, because of that the same reason. Mm. You know, so I know the dangers. But yeah, that should be free. Um, and yeah, in school, it should be a part of the curriculum. It should be. I agree with that. Right, especially at, you know, when I don't know if I don't know necessarily for for um I don't think it should be for boys, I think self defence should be for girls in school, but for boys I think it should be the thing like the dangers of like, you know when it comes to women's safety. Mm. Uh, well, right, yeah, I, but, think, I think people should go back to the old ways of respecting women more, you know, because it's like, yeah, there's a lot of that kind of badness that goes on, you know, it seems like a lot of respect has been lost, um, you know, I'm just happy, you know, that you respect women and... Yeah, you but women. unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately that respect is lost because you have, and I'm going to use the word bleep, Mm. Police officers mm. who are male mm. who abuse that system. Yeah, that's why. That's why women can never walk walk the streets or go out when they want. That's why. You know, they say, "Oh, it's all right for us to go out," and yeah, that is true. Right? Yeah, I can go out and have a run. Mm-hmm. Right, but even but even that, even, right, and even though I can take care of myself and you know whatever, so, I still look at where I'm going. Mm. I may not; it might not be the same in the same way as a woman would do it, mm-hmm. but I still look around. You know, maybe that, but that's but that's because of my anxiety, and you know, I'm always on the lookout. Right, but <clears throat> yeah, in terms of women's safety, it should be more of a um, more of a, more of a priority. Yes, 
And it should be, and it should be four for three. Yes, I think it should. You know, because there are there are a lot of things that are available or easily accessible for men, mm. but it's not afforded. But women aren't afforded the same luxury. I agree. No, um, because when I'm gonna have to wrap this up because to in about five minutes, are okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Because I mean, I know that they, are, I know that they are wanting to have this new phone phone number service mm. for mental health, and they're spending millions on it. Mm. Um, if it was me, if I if I was in charge, I'd be like, nope, we don't need another phone number. What we need a better mental health system. Yes, I agree with that. Revamp, revamp it. Bring it to the 21st century. Mm. Make more places. <clears throat> and also, yeah, and also... More compassion. Yeah, not, not only that, what I, what I think is the absolute detriment mm. is the amount of people they have to do. Okay. Because if you, because if you think... Right, if you go to a counsellor or whatever, mm -hmm. <coughs> right, and you get an appointment with a, appointment with a counsellor, and let's say you have 30 minutes with them or whatever, if you're lucky. Yeah. Whilst, they're in the, whilst you're in the appointment, they're doing paperwork, writing things down. Yeah. Well, some right, do. So, some do, yeah. Um... But then, they're, but then they're expected after that appointment. Right, they're expected to, to then do all of the paperwork, write up notes. So, in a, so effectively, all of their time is doing paperwork. So therefore, they're not, they're not able to dedicate quality time with the client. Um. I think we're gonna have to discuss this more next time because I do I do sessions yeah. myself, but I don't really take notes. But I think sometimes notes are necessary because you have to revise and go back. But yeah, yeah, I absolutely I absolutely agree. But I think that some, but I think from what I, from my experiences or from what I've been from what I've seen, mm -hmm. I think that has, I think paperwork has been push to the forefront too much so that I think in certain cases mm -hmm. the, the the client or whatever sometimes go unnoticed. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And it feels as if Intimate. Yeah, so yeah, that's what I'm so that's what I meant by that. But in yeah. Terms of, in terms of the NHS I agree, because it's all red tape. Yeah. Um they don't really it's just about ticking boxes and filling in forms, really with the NH with yeah that kind of system um, I've seen a few private therapists and one didn't take any notes um, but the one on the NHS did um, so yeah I don't know but for me personally yeah, I, don't, I don't take notes um, if they want me to I will but normally I don't because I find it a bit rude like if you're speaking to somebody sat there writing uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, I had that. Um, I had that experience mm -hmm. with my ther with my first therapist because mm -hmm. I would, because I tried to because I try to keep eye contact with her. Okay. To make sure to obviously make sure that you know she's paying attention. Yeah. But all the while she was like head down, and I'm like. Yeah, you see, I, I, I was like, um, "Are you? I, 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 and I'm like, "Are you listening to me?" I found that quite rude. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like. I'm going into somewhat emotional baggage, mm. uh, so you can understand my situation. Mm. Yeah, you're there, like right, doing that. Mm. But yeah, um, but yeah, that that that's basically in a not in a in a nutshell my brief briefest history. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm so I mean. I'm sure at another given time, 
we could maybe go in more depth. Yes. I don't know. Maybe we maybe we could do go in more depth on my podcast. I don't know. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't. I'm down. For because that. I'm because I am I'm uncensored. So it's my podcast. I can say what I want. I'm not limited. Um, but yeah, that's me. Um, again, I will send myself uh, all the the relevant links and that. And there will, will, will be in the description. Um, so you know, yeah. if you want to speak on Torrance podcast or you know, comment on the page and you know, get involved in that, you know, why not? Why not do it? You know, he, he definitely cares and he's passionate about what he does. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, obviously. You know, feel again, feel free to request to join my group. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, just to add a PSA because I've had quite a few people not read, not fully read the the rules. Mm-hmm. Do you please um, read the rules if you wish to? Um, it's no judgment zone. You are you are free to be who you are. Um, if you want to talk, you can talk. If you don't, and you're just there for um, more support, that is fine. You know, I'm not pushing anything on you. It, you know, we all need help. I just offer that, and it's up to you how you use it. So yeah, um, but I want to thank myself for inviting me on. Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, because I know that we've been speaking for a while. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, because obviously you're you're busy, um, but I'm glad we were able to do, to do this. And so, yeah. Obviously, you know, we'll be doing this again at some point. Obviously, we'll discuss that in more detail. But well. for now, I just want to say thank you for having me on. Um, great talking to you and yeah okay all right bye and you know bye for now but yes i will be in touch about this yep okay all right in a bit in a bit